Hey, it's Mike from Game World Engineer, and today I'm going to go over the new Godot main maintenance release 422 and 414. They were just released a few days ago, and we're going to go over what was fixed in Godot. And because the maintenance release is mostly a bunch of fixes, and instead of new features, they've um, concentrated on fixing a lot of bugs in Godot. So this maintenance release has just been released, so you can download it now. And I'm going to go over the fixes right now in this article. So just to note, the 4.1.4 branch is the previous stable branch. They limit themselves to backporting only the safest or most critical fixes. So there are less fixes to 4.1.4 than there are for 4.2.2 because they don't want to break any existing 4.1 projects so they have limit they're trying to play it safe here so uh, with 41x it should be a, a lot less about half the number of fixes that, uh, that there are for 4.2.2 so most in development projects are currently on the 4.2 branch so while we also focus on preserving compatibility we've included more quality of life improvements to make it easier to use Godot 4.2 in production and then they have the download links for each one you can download. So there's more than 400 improvements for this release, which makes it significant as far as patch releases go. And they have the interactive change log, which has a list of all the things that were fixed. I will go over that later. The improved command line export pipeline. So they've added uh, fixes to this so that if you are using GitHub Actions or GitLab CI or some other CI CD pipeline to automate uh, building of your projects. Uh, they said that uh, people use it to export their game to all the different supported platforms they, they want at one time. Uh, so the fix is there's been some issues with that and so the repositories typically don't include the Godot folder with important resources. So before exporting, the editor needs to run once to properly import everything. Uh, but now they've got a dash dash import command, which does that and then exits. And it's implied in the export release export debug. So you don't even need to do anything extra. It'll just do that automatically when you're using the dash dash export release or dash dash export debug. And then the headless mode relies on a no-op rendering backend, which implements the API without requiring an actual GPU and display to run their logic. Some scaffolding was missing there to properly support multi-mesh data and shader parameters, which should now be fixed too. And the exit code is now properly set when the export fails, so your script can react accordingly. So before, if it was failing, it had an incorrect exit code, so possibly your script would be broken if it ex exited. So uh, this should improve your export pipelines. The other big fix was the audio crackling issues on Windows. And it's been a long-standing issue on Windows where the audio would crackle or have distortion in some projects. And it, it also affected some published games too. So if your game had this issue, it should now be fixed with 422. So, and apparently it was a fairly simple fix that someone came up with, and it's now included in 422 and 414. You can look at this in GitHub to see what was actually done. And they say, yes, it's a straightforward fix to this to this issue. So that all the details are here in GitHub. So next is a workaround for some types of corrupted scene load errors. A lot of users routinely run into issues when refactoring their project by renaming or moving files around. And they have backported some of those fixes from the 4.3 dev branch and into 4.2.2. So one of those improvements is to allow loading scenes with missing external resources due to having moving them, moved them around, especially from outside of Godot, instead of reporting the scene as corrupted. This isn't perfect, but should already significantly help when this happens. They have fixes to animation features after the move to Animation Mixer in 4.2 uh, because it had a major refactoring of Animation Player and Animation Tree on top of a common Animation Mixer base class to share the base implementation for many co common features. There were some regressions that we didn't have time to solve before the 4.2 release, but work continued afterwards. A number of those issues are now being fixed in 4.2.2. Uh, 
and the old bugs have also been fixed at the same time. So to find out more, look at the animation category and the interactive change log. And there's many more fixes. And we are going to look at the 414 fixes. 414 also has the audio crackling issue fixed. There's a infamous slot greater than slot max error affecting exported projects that's fixed. There's some GD script and C sharp and uh, documentation fixes. And you can look at the rest of the fixes in the interactive change log. And there are no known incompatibilities with previous releases, so they are encouraging everyone to upgrade to 422. And if you experience any issues in upgrading your project to either one of 422 or 414, then they want you to file an issue with GitHub. We'll now look at the Godot interactive change log. Uh, so if we go in here and we click on 422, we have 422 fixes listed for 422. And if you want to see the breakdown by stable and all the other releases they have there, they, there's a whole subcategory. But all you need to do to find that is to click on 422. Oops. So they have they had three release candidates as stable, but all of them are in here. So 422. So some of the notable fixes here, they are fixing a potential infinite loop when calculating the tile editor zoom level. That's a 2D fix. So there apparently there was an infinite loop being created here. So they've changed, they fixed that. And here is the fixed audio crack crackling issues due to the incorrect Wasapi bu buffer size, as previously mentioned. And they had a few other fixes to the audio as well. So you can come in here and get the details by clicking on any of these links to GitHub. And in the documentation fixes, there are a ton of documentation updates that have been done in this release. And some people have noted that the documentation was pretty uh, lacking and needed more detail. So a lot of the people that are contributing to the project have been updating the documentation. And you can see the details in one, any of these items where they've overhauled the documentation. I note that Mikion is one of the main people that are doing a lot of these updates. You'll notice him contributing on different ones, but he's done a lot of work here in the Godot docs, and it just barely touches the leading description and virtual methods description intentionally. These are so long, verbose, and tricky, they're worth addressing in another pull request following this up. But they've done some corrections and made wording match and changed words where it felt necessary and added and updated more examples and examples are important in documentation to show you how to use something so this is a good fix and they've got a ton of documentation fixes for you to look at and you'll just notice that the documentation is better now and you can see one of these documentation fixes here that was the get node and resource one that was mentioned in that first one and they have more examples here and just the description. And so you'll notice a bunch of these all over the documentation. In the import section, they have fixes for GLTF importing and exporting as well. So there was a crash when importing a file with a skeleton as the root, which is now has been now fixed. So if you look at all the import and export things. Uh, I think GLTF will be better uh, supported now, even if you had any problems with it before. There are five fixes to GLTF importing and exporting, one of which is to remove a workaround in the exporter that double converts RA textures to RG. You can see the details here. If you click on that. The, there are three bugs which prevented extracted textures from being refreshed. The crash when importing a GLTF file when if the skeleton has the root and exporting invalid meshes and attempting to export gizmo meshes is now fixed. And finally, we have fix wrong indexing when generating dummy tangents in GLTF import. There are a few physics fixes, one being the body leaving area gravity influence fix, where if you had a gravity area that was overriding regular gravity and a body was inside it, and it gets teleported outside of it, it was still applying that overrided gravity to it. So, or, or if you were disabling the area 3D that it was in, it would still be applying the gravity. So this is this 
is fixed now, so you, it should no longer apply gravity to that body in those cases. There are some particle fixes where it will now only update the particle velocity when it changes and fixes the early activation of particle trail section. So you may notice that your particles are now behaving better than, than they were before. There are a bunch of porting fixes and rendering fixes, which you can come here and see if any of the fixes that you've been wondering about have been fixed. There's to too many to go over right here but many, many fixes to that. And in the third party section, we have a bunch of fixes that say Thor VG. You might wonder what Thor VG is. Thor VG is called Thor Vector Graphics. It's a lightweight open source and portable library designed for rendering vector-based scenes and animations. It is used in Godot. So if you come to thorvg.org slash about and look in there, or just do a search on the word Godot, you can see that Thor VG is used in the Godot project to enable the creation of sleek and visually appealing user interfaces and vector resources in the Godot game engine. There have been a bunch of updates and fixes to Thor VG in, in Godot. If you are familiar with what exactly Thor VG was doing, it will now do it better. So in this release, there are now uh, Mac OS fixes. There are nine fixes specifically for Mac OS. Let's go over those. We have the fix molten VK SDK selection detection after the file location changes. We have check the Vulkan SDK version when looking for molten VK libraries. So two fixes related to molten VK. Molten VK is a Vulkan portability implementation. It layers a subset of the high performance industry standard Vulkan graphics and compute API over Apple's Metal Graphics Framework, enabling Vulkan applications to run on Mac OS, iOS, and TV OS. In the GUI category for Mac OS, it has fixed the changing main menu item name. In the porting section, we have quite a few fixes here. Uh, update window visible state on deminiaturizing. We have uh, enabled secure restorable state. We have allow open shell to handle file names without the file colon slash slash. There is a fix to the color picker on HDR screens. And there's an it fix to an issue with moving maximized windows in Mac OS. Uh, because before, if you maximized a window, you couldn't move it around. It was stuck in place unless you unless you demaximize it, but now you can move it around, so that's been done. And the Mac OS menu bar and dock stop appearing after closing a sub window, so that's been fixed as well. So that's it for Mac OS. And finally, we want to go over what is this screenshot from. It is from RAM, Random Access Mayhem, a game in development by Xylem Studios. If you want to wishlist this on Steam, you can go here, you can watch the trailer, it's a roguelike shooter with no player character. You're controlling enemies to turn them against each other. So if you want to download the demo, you can download it here. It isn't the full game is not out yet to be announced, but you can download the demo and try it out yourself. So that go that is it for this update to Godot for the maintenance release 422. If you want to come in here and take a look at it yourself. You can, I will leave a link down below to this blog article and to the interactive change log where you can see everything that was done in 422 and 414. So there's 229 fixes to 414 that we did not go over. Some of the fixes are the same as being done to 422. You might want to go over the list to see if your issue has been solved. So if you want to hear more about these updates, like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.